Buenos días. Buenos días. Cheers. Great. There it is. Great brush. Good morning, my friends. How we doing? Chef, Costco, love it. Bonadilla. What's going on, Omar? Que lo que? Senor Vicente. <laughs> How we doing? Welcome back. Yesterday was great. Yesterday was great. Yesterday was textbook. If you came to the live stream, it was textbook. 4,200 rejections. That AMD downside was nice. Tesla 198 was nice. NVIDIA 400 rejections. Nice. Yeah, Target's getting crushed, huh? Que pasa? <laughs> que pasa? <laughs> morning, 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 morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, back under 4200. The 4200 dance. The dance has begun. That's what I like to call it. The dance. We're definitely dancing. Yeah, AI, I think that was always bound to happen. Just, it's too much. Too much too quick. All right. Let's pull up the, uh, the earnings calendar here. Economic calendar. <coughs> we'll wait a few minutes for everyone to jump in. Got some important uh, important data this morning. ADP, jobless claims. Some important stuff to watch out for, for sure. Uh, how many, so how many, how do we know the retest is holding? How many candles do we need to reject on that time frame? I think, uh, you know, on the two-minute chart, I watch probably at least two two-minute candles. So let's say four or five minutes. If I continue to see rejections there, Right, there's a point where, you know, this is very important. This is why reading the book, reading some psychology books is, are very important in my opinion, right? Uh, Mark Douglas, his, he says, right, at some point, we, there, there's never going to be 100% certainty in any trade, right? You're never going to have 100% certainty. At some point, there's like that, let's say, uh, let's think there's like a loading bar, right? Imagine a loading bar. At some point, it's going to hit 90% certainty, and you have to take the trade. You just have to take it, right? And you can't be scared of the uncertainty. The uncertainty in a trade is something that we can't be scared of, right? There's always going to be uncertainty in any trade that we take. And that uncertainty is where we, you know, it's the that amount of uncertainty. Let's say it's 5%, 10%. That's our 5%, 10% chance of losing and stopping out and taking our loss, right? It's never going to be 100%. There's in, it's impossible. It's impossible. So if the strategy, right, if the strategy is setting up, if the retest is holding, if we're close to the retest level, if, you know, I'm saying, okay, this is starting to hold, this is interesting, I like this, let's say the NASDAQ's moving lower, if it's a rejection or the NASDAQ's moving higher, if it's a, if it's a demand bounce, right, and I say, okay, this all lines up, you know, I can't keep second-guessing myself. I can't just look at this and look at this and just not take this trade, right? Um, so... That's, you know, it comes to a point where it sort of gets second nature. I, I will I will be honest, right? It's sort of hard to, it's hard to just say you need exactly five one-minute candles, right? There, there's, there's no perfect, uh, there's no perfect uh, explanation like that. I can't be like, hey, you need exactly one five-minute candle before entering. It, that's, it's just not, it's just not that way. 
it becomes, you know, you understanding what price action looks like, reading the candles, starting to get a real feeling and experience for what the candles, what a strong candle looks like. Um, and then at that point, you have to take that shot, understand your risk, and have your stop loss. It's time, right? It's time. It is time. That is the ultimate, in my opinion, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate, um, you know, the ultimate key is that time. It's that experience, right? And how do we gain experience? How do we gain time in the market? It's by not blowing up your account in six months and then saying you can't trade, right? That's not going to work, right? So how do you have 10 years of trading? How have I gained 10 years of experience of looking at charts? It's because I've, <coughs> I've maintained a comfortable risk tolerance. I've not blown up my life savings in six months. Um, and I continue to trade the market and learn what the market does, right? And so over time, the money comes. But if we enter trading, say I'm going to put 20K in my trading account and I have no, no idea what the hell I'm doing and I'm going to lose 20K in two weeks and then I say, fuck trading, I can't trade, right? That's not going to work for anyone. So hopefully that gives you a little idea. Hard to answer that exactly, but a good little question before we start the live stream. Let's get started. Welcome back, guys. Hope you guys are having a good morning. Hope you did good yesterday. Yesterday was a nice, nice day, up $3,000 yesterday, mostly on SPX. I won't, I won't lie. It was all SPX. Uh, it was just, hey, 4,200 rejection. I saw that yesterday. I said, I'm taking SPX puts off this level. I have to. I have to, right? That's the same thing. It's the same thing we just talked about. Of course, there was a level of uncertainty that SPX or the ES could pop over 4,200, um, but right? When I saw 4,200 rejecting, I said, hey, I have to take this trade, right? I have to take this trade. This is exactly what we talked about. This is a key level. I have to take my puts off this 4,200 level. And it worked out very nicely. Um, so that was nice. Welcome back, guys. Let's get started. Press that like button if you could. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. We do this every single day starting at 8 a.m. I promise you're going to get some value out of these live streams. I get messages every single day about how people have taking trades off this live stream and it's completely free to show up uh, so congratulations if you come here if you make money from the free live streams that's awesome all right today first day of june welcome to june tesla uh nvidia channel big meta 262 demand very very interesting amd 120 rejections were sexy uh well 124 yesterday was sexy uh but 120 today is something i'm watching Microsoft 327, Costco Wedge, and Netflix 400. There's more to look at. We're going to look at a lot here. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, first things first, economic earnings calendar. The residents at 1428 Brickle, a limited collection of two to four bedroom homes starting at two million. Damn. Well, I won't be moving there. I'll tell you that. That's probably very nice. Someone sent to Larry. Thank you, man. 999. Great trade on AMD yesterday, Larry. Great trade on AMD yesterday, Larry. Well done. That was sick. Uh, GB, thanks for the awesome pre-market prep. Sent you an email last week. All right, you got it, Norman. Sorry about that, man. I, I fall behind on emails, guys. I fall behind, but I will get to them. Um, all right. Today, economic calendar, ADP employment, 815. That's in about, uh, what is that? That's seven minutes. Uh, ADP employment. We'll see if there's any movement off of that. Jobless claims, 830. U.S. productivity, 830. Construction spending 10 o'clock, ISM manufacturing, PMI at 945. So there's a lot. There's a lot here. So we got to be careful today, right? Let's see what the initial move is here at 815, 830. And then we'll see what that intraday move shows us. Tomorrow, some uh, employment reports, unemployment rates, hourly wages, uh, some nice stuff tomorrow as well. So here's the economic calendar. Watch out. We'll keep an eye at 815, 830 today. Oh, look at that rejection. Look at that rejection on the NASDAQ. I'm going to talk about something that happened yesterday in the NASDAQ that was so clean. Uh, so uh, let's pick up the earnings calendar real quick. Earnings calendar real quick. That is such a clean rejection. Oh, my goodness. Congrats if you just took that. Uh, let's pull up that earnings calendar real quick, get an idea of what reported yesterday. There were some important stocks that reported yesterday. Uh, CRM. CrowdStrike, C3.ai, right, reported yesterday. These were important. CRWD, all right, CrowdStrike, CRM, uh, AI, 
Okta, Chewy, Nordstrom, some big ones reported these three yesterday. This morning, Dollar General, Macy's. I'm actually interested how these reported because the retail sector has been getting crushed. Uh, DG, M, uh, Broadcom, After Hours, Lululemon, After Hours. I am wearing everything Lululemon today. <laughs> like, I, I just can't. Um, it's a cult, and I have been sucked into the cult. Uh, MongoDB, and that's that. Really nothing Friday. Actually, there is nothing Friday. Uh, so those are your earnings. We'll take a look at DG and Macy's real quick. What did D? Okay, yeah, that's not good for the retail sector. Dollar General. What's the other dollar? Dollar Tree. What's Dollar Tree? DLTR. Didn't really move off of it. Macy's down. What's Walmart doing this morning? What's the XLP doing? Yeah. So <clears throat> continues to see. Some weakness on this uh, on these retailers. Continuing to see weakness on these retailers. But let's get started with the futures. Here we go. Yeah, advanced auto parts. I talked about this with, uh, with the group yesterday. I feel like this is a dying business, man. I, I don't think this business will be around in our, in our far future. Um, car parts. I mean, I've never gone into advanced auto parts and got car parts or anything in that nature. I guess for like really quick mechanic services, maybe. Um, but I don't know. Oil changes are a thing of, you know, if, if the world goes, if the world continues to go the way it is with electric vehicles, oil changes are going to be non-existent, uh, except for maybe used cars, right? And that, that market share is shrinking. Uh, so I don't know, man. This is not a company that I would have any interest in investing in long term. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it sort of seems like a business that's just tend it's just sort of bound to die over time uh, with where the world is going. But who knows? Um, so, anyways, Nasdaq, uh, Nasdaq, very key rejections right now at fourteen three thirty six. Now, why fourteen three thirty six? <laughs> EVs need oil changes too. You're right. <laughs> um, fourteen three thirty six. That is the Tuesday low, and look at how well that that level is reacting this morning. This is what you need to be watching today, without a doubt, all right? This is 14,336. This is Tuesday's lows, right? And that Tuesday low had a lot of, um, had a lot of importance yesterday, intraday. Uh, so you can see we rejected that level yesterday. We're up into that level again in the pre-market. And you can see that downside off of 14,336. This is a must watch. I don't think there is any reason to go long tech if it is below Tuesday's lows, right? That's my if then statement for today. If NQ is below 14,336, then we should not be looking to long this back into supply, right? So that is important. That's very similar to that 4,200 level on the ES. Um, yesterday, let me show you what happened, right? This is where I took QQQ puts yesterday with the group. We took them right here. This candle right here is where I took QQQ puts yesterday for about a 50% gain. Why did I take QQQ puts on this candle, right? This candle right here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This candle right here is where I took QQQ puts. Now this candle was green at one point and it pushed back into the Tuesday's lows. And obviously it's hard to sort of uh, talk about now because we're after the fact. But if you were watching this candle yesterday, intraday, this is the 1016 two minute candle. This candle flipped red extremely aggressively. Why did this candle mean something to me? Why did a rejection right here mean something to me? Why did that cause me to take QQQ puts? The reason for that is because this rejection was at the exact, to the dollar amount, the exact low of the previous day, right? The exact previous day low, 14,336, right there. This is Tuesday. If we go into Wednesday and we go over, we can see... Bam, right? This is a candle that tells you a lot. And if you guys were on the voice chat in the Discord chat yesterday, you heard me say this candle is very important, right? And this should lead to further downside, right? And so you saw a nice downside move after that rejection. 
extremely extremely clean that was very key now if we go over to today what is happening that's intraday we keep going right look at this rejection that just happened oh man at the exact level again All right so just really really clean stuff <clears throat> on the technicals on the nasdaq it looks like we just got adp employment data uh not much movement here a little bit of downside as of right now um, but the key is the technical levels and as of right now it's 14336 on the nasdaq and to the downside it's very clearly 14250 demand All right so there's your channel for today 14336 14250 very very clear channel and this is where we play our channel rules right we look to short at supply we look to long at demand um but we do not do that until confirmation right i'm not gonna just long the second we hit 250 today i will only long if we start to see something like this right some kind of build some kind of higher low higher high and then start to look maybe to build a long position but that is not until you get confirmation same thing to the downside right same thing up here you get that rejection right and you look to start to short here off that three 336 and look at this downside move what a textbook futures trade this morning if you guys caught that awesome so 14336 nasdaq 14250 demand if we break that 14250 demand today guys i think you got some real juice here right i think there's definitely some more downside to be had right we talked about this yesterday there is not much below this 14250 here if we break this shelf on the nasdaq i would definitely be looking for further downside here um so definitely watching that today definitely interested in the downside uh if we reject this 336 and if we break under this 250 all right definitely interested there so that's the nasdaq let's go to the qqq right look at this 348.50 rejection that's coming in this morning this is really clean i didn't even look at this chart yet and it's already doing this i haven't even touched this chart today uh if we go to the 15 minute chart look how clean tuesday's lows are just turning into rejections on the qqq here this is extremely clean tuesday's lows <clears throat> look at all these rejections right here extremely nice there if we break uh i would say it's this 346.50 level if we break that 346.50 level here today uh, i would anticipate the qqq having more downside here under this 346 346.50 we break wednesday's lows yesterday's lows pre-market or after hours lows right i would look for that downside move all right that is extremely clean um that is just clean textbook and textbook uh technicals now for everyone that's going to come tomorrow and say you said we're going down we went up um if we break back over 348.50 right and if we start to hold back above tuesday's lows that will lead to upside right that is the same concept here as nasdaq if we get above this uh 336 380 area we start to turn this into support then that will lead to upside right so we have to watch both ways we have to understand that we adjust to what the market is giving us intraday but as of right now very clear 348.50 rejections demand from yesterday's lows 346.50 right and we're looking to see which side that breaks very clear extremely clear 4200 there's your dance right extremely nice little rejection right there 4200 yesterday 4200 yesterday 4200 yesterday textbook stuff you guys saw look at this little nasty nasty fake out right look at this little nasty fake out on the five minute chart yesterday on the es there's your es open right you can see we got 10 minutes 15 minutes of upside huge huge wick rejection on the five minute after i saw that right after i saw this candle that was it i mean you you just can't second guess yourself anymore uh that is simply just a nastiness of a candle at 4200 look at that push above got up to 4204 died under it closed down here at 4195 i started to take my spx puts here and i got about 100 percent on them uh into this 4170 area so really nice stuff there on the es yesterday just a textbook 4200 supply rejection and uh we're there again right and you can see this morning we could even put this up to like 4203 it looks like that's maybe a little bit more of a respected level you can see uh 
4203. So you can see it's a little bit higher than 4200. So maybe you want to have, you know, that little zone mapped out just so you don't get faked out. Um, so 4203 to 4200 downside demand 4185 right here 4185 downside demand why 4185 one of you guys in the discord chat actually called that out yesterday so kudos to you um right around this 4185 demand on es is what held yesterday this is starting to look like a nasty little bear flag here all right this is starting to look like a nasty little 4200 bear flag uh that could be that could definitely lead to this move back into 4170 and maybe even lower. But 4170 definitely still looks like a level that could be tested here. This is, that's pretty nasty. So if we do not get over 4200, right, it's pretty easy, right? It's pretty easy. If you walk into today, uh, you just walk into today and you say, if I don't find a, if I don't find a short entry, I'm not going to trade, but I sure as hell am not going to try to long the market if the ES is under 4,200, it's quite easy, right? Take away part of your uncertainty, right? For me, this is a very certain day because I have absolutely zero interest in longing anything if the ES is under 4,200. I don't care if Tesla goes straight up today. I don't care if a certain stock just runs away by itself. I'm not going to long that stock if the ES is under 4,200. Uh, that's how I trade, right? That's the way I trade. I trade based off futures levels. And I don't think there's any reason to look long or think that the market is strong if the ES is under 4,200, right? And the NASDAQ is under Tuesday's lows, right? I don't think there's any reason to be looking for that upside. That's how I trade, right? And I'm not going to really be interested in a demand hold here back into 4,200 because I just don't think that's, uh, you know, I don't think that that is that strong of a level to be playing upside off of. So I like to take away uncertainties in my trading. And for me, taking away uncertainties has helped. And for me, that means I'm not going to long anything, anything, if the ES is under 4,200. Uh, I will only long on this breakout or this break and retest because I know if I miss a long today, let's say the ES goes here all day. If I miss that long today, let's say I miss Tesla today, it goes straight up by itself. I know that if the ES does this and starts to hold demand at 42, I know this is going to be a better trade, right? I know that this long right here will be better than any long in here. We can, you can scalp all you want joint. That's not how I trade, right? I'm saying how I trade. You guys can do whatever you do. I'm just here talking about what I trade. I do not trade little micro scalps for five points within this channel. It's not what I do. Um, but hey, there's money to be made, of course, right? Of course, there's a possible demand bounce off 4185 today for a long off that level. Absolutely. I like to keep my trading less, less variables, right? For me, if then statement under 42, no longs over 42. I like longs, right? That's how I look at that. Uh, so keeps it, keeps me honest, keeps it easy. So for me, 4,200 today, 4,185, those are your levels. Spy. Um, 30 minute chart, right? Uh, this 418 demand is stepping up, right? This 418 demand keeps stepping up a little bit here. Uh, that's sort of like your 4185. And then you got some of these wicks down here around this 41750. It's not really that clean here, right? You got these 41750 wicks on the, on the spy over here. I'm actually going to delete the 418. I almost think it doesn't matter. It's like this 419. It's not as clean as the ES. This is why I watch the ES. Because it's never as clean here. It looks like it's about 419 to 41750. Is about the channel that I'm starting to see here. So you can see if I zoom in here on the 15 minute. To me it looks like 419 supply. Right? 419 supply. 419 supply. 419 supply. 419 supply. 419 supply. Um, and then right here, 417.50 demand yesterday, demand yesterday. And then, of course, we're watching these lows from yesterday as well. So it looks like the immediate channel to be monitoring here on the SPY is 419 to 417.50. That looks like your channel to watch. But again, right? Again, if we look bigger picture, 
<clears throat> if we look bigger picture here on the ES, if we break 4,200, right, we still, we're, there might be some longs in this area here, right? This might be a nice little long play from 4,200 to 4,220, right? I still don't want to long into this previous low either, or at least be careful. I did not long Apple yesterday, no. Um, so previous low, previous low, previous low, just thinking bigger picture, right? If we do get this move, right? If we get this move today, there might be some longs. I'd be willing to maybe long this 20 point range, uh, but please be careful of this 4220 up here, right? Please be careful of this 4220 up here, right? That's a big level up there, all right? <clears throat> that is very equal to the SPY uh, above 419 into like this 420, right? So watch this 420, 421. There might be some longs uh, above 419. There might be some quick longs over 4200, but please be careful of this, uh, these previous lows at 420, 420, 4220, all right? Dow Jones dead. Russell dead next. Let's continue. Tesla. All right. So, Tesla. No, I am not holding calls. <laughs> no, I am not. Um, so, <clears throat> 204. That's the big one, right? That's the big one on Tesla. 204, 204. Very nice level. Big watch today. If we can get above 204, if we start to see this, right, and we start to hold above, that could lead to our next upside move, right? If we start to see a 204 break and retest, that could be a nice upside move. Now, I'm a little bit uneasy of playing upside on Tesla still, right? I'm a little bit uneasy of playing upside on Tesla still because I don't know with certainty how it's going to react all in this zone, right? I don't know how Tesla's going to react even up into like this 210, 212 zone, right? Because this is this is a lot of previous, uh, you know, interest, a lot of levels in here, right? Look at all these, look at all these lows and all these highs in this zone here between this 204 and let's just call it 210. So I'm a little bit cautious on the longs on Tesla. It's possibly a trade that I miss, uh, because I would be a little bit uneasy on that trade. Uh, just simply looking at all of these rejections up here. This one rejected at 207, right? This rejected at 212. This rejected at 217. This one rejected at 212, right? So it's not really that perfect. Uh, it's not a very clean, clean level uh, here on Tesla. It's really like a major zone, right? If I really had to say... It's really a zone between 204 and 217, right? That's really the zone that you have to sort of be careful in. Now, you know, it's a little bit difficult to put that big of a zone on your chart because obviously there's going to be opportunity in that area. Uh, but on the five-minute chart, if we zoom in, I think you can probably find the trade off 204, right? I think there's probably something off 204. Just looking at how important it has been over the last few days, 204, 204 area, 204 yesterday. So I think you can probably find upside off 204 uh, if the ES NASDAQ push higher today. On the flip side, right, you could also look for this, right? You could also look for that. So either way, 204 is your watch today. Keep an eye on that level. Demand seems to be pretty strong. So I'm not that fond of the downside. Uh, you can clearly see all this demand really in this whole zone that just keeps stepping up, right? Stepped up here, stepped up yesterday at this gap fill level. Uh, so, you know, if you can catch this, right, I would be a profit taker here. You know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't short here and hope for this, right? I wouldn't short here and hope for this. If you're going to short here, respect your channel and sort of maybe take profits at this 198, right? So it's a little bit of a tight range here on Tesla. Respect it, right? If you're going to short this 204 supply, be a profit taker down here, Um and just watch that 204 for upside if it breaks out, all right? NVIDIA, I'm interested in this one as well, right? This is a very interesting channel on NVIDIA as well. The two, the 400 rejection yesterday was sick. Uh, missed it, just haven't really traded NVIDIA because of the option premiums, 
I'm just waiting for those option premiums to sort of die off. They have been extremely expensive, and I'm not too certain how they're going to move. They probably moved pretty well yesterday. Let's take a look at actually how they moved yesterday. Let's look at the 400 puts yesterday. Let's see what they did. Now let's just take the 395s. Damn. Expensive. Okay, they moved. Yeah, they moved. They moved fantastic. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. They went from $3 to 18 Oh, no, that's on Tuesday. Okay. They went from 6 to... That's still a huge move on those. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they're moving pretty well. Wow. I didn't think they moved that much. But they're they're moving. All right, so nvidia um all right we got let's see what the let's see what the data looks like real quick so a little bit of upside on the data here let's go spy get the jobless claims numbers jobless claims three uh 232 versus 235 basically flat um continuing jobless claims one one point seven nine five versus one point eight is pretty much within expectations, I'd say. So, a little bit of upside, but what are we watching still? Forty two hundred. All right, watch this forty two hundred. That's gonna be key. All right, let's go back to Nvidia. So, um, we could see a nice demand bounce here today. This could be a nice little pullback for demand bounce. If NVIDIA wants to stay in this channel, right, this is getting close to that demand low. All right, we're getting close to that, uh, to that 377, 375 demand. It's down here, right? We can clearly see, right? Demand bounce, demand bounce, big demand bounce. We are pulling back into that demand. So be careful, right? If the market is strong today, NVIDIA might try to hold this 370, 375 zone. I would feel a little bit more comfortable on longs in this zone, right? Getting more value for my, you know, for my play. Uh, will it pull back to there? We'll have to see. Uh, but this is getting, I would just think of this zone as, you know, you're starting to approach some potential buying down here. Uh, so I'd be careful on the short side. I would not want to short into this, right? If you short into this, you're exposing yourself to some crazy bounce off this level. I don't think that's, I don't think there's reason to do that. I would only short NVIDIA if it looks really weak under 370, right, at this point. At this point, as we're at the bottom of the channel, I would only shorten video on a strong break and hold under 370, right? That's what I'd be watching. If you continue to maintain these lows, then I would assume NVIDIA tries to gain momentum, tries to hold here, and maybe pushes again towards that 400. So either way, channel trade, respect the channel, as we always talk about. That's what I'd be watching. AMD. All right, yeah, let's skip. Let's go AMD. AMD was awesome yesterday. Uh, this was the trade we took yesterday. We'll go to the two-minute chart. Uh, I got faked out of this one early morning, but I got back in after getting a little bit more confirmation. I'll go to the two-minute. So here's sort of why I got faked out of this one originally and then got back in. The original, excuse me. Oh, man. Um, the original level that I was looking to play off of AMD yesterday was two uh, 123.50. So 123.50 was previous day lows. Um, or was it 123? I think, okay, I was playing off 123. That's what I was looking off. I was playing off this little pre-market low, this little rejection point here. I was looking to short off 123. So if I zoom in, we got some 123 rejections early morning. And so I took some puts here looking for that downside to come in. Uh, I did get stopped out of this play on this push right here. I got stopped out uh, and took my small loss. And then after we fell back below this 123, I re-entered those puts. Now, the right level yesterday, which is you know sometimes where you have to reassess what you're looking at and learn from your mistakes, the right level to watch really was 124. Uh, or you can even say it was the previous day low, right? But after I took my loss, I did not get discouraged from this trade. I still knew that AMD had previous day lows there. And just look at how perfect that rejection was, guys. Look how perfect that was. Previous day lows. This is my favorite trade, right? You guys know 
the break and retest, previous day lows, previous day highs. I talk about this all the time. It really doesn't get any cleaner than this. You, it just, it's just a matter of being able to execute and watch this intraday with a clear head. All right? And all this was yesterday was a morning pop. You don't long this upside because the NASDAQ and the ES were still under their key levels. Right? You're not going to long AMD upside because in the morning, the ES was not above 4,200. Uh, I'm sorry. Go over. I'm not going to long AMD with the ES under 4,200, right? This little pop yesterday into 42. Not going to do that, right? So if I'm watching this AMD upside, I'm still looking to see if the rejections come in, All right? So little upside, fake upside, little bull trap into previous day lows. This is why I say if then statements, right? You're never going to, in my trading, I will never long something if it is below the previous day lows. There's no reason to try to chase upside into the previous day lows, right? So this is previous day lows, right? We're not going to trade. Um, we're not going to trade upside into that previous day low, right? So upside, you see that rejection of previous day lows, and then that very nice continuation, man. Absolutely awesome. Um, really nice trade, really nice downside, really happy about that one. And, uh, today, right today, what are we doing? All right. What are we doing today? Look at this rejection here. Look at this rejection here. This is 120. Look at what AMD just did in the pre-market. It just turned 120 into a major rejection. So AMD today, you're watching 120 to 116, right? If you get under 116, I like that downside. If you pop into 120, look for the supply rejection. You could look for the demand bounce off 116 as well, uh, but just make sure the market is strong at that point. I'm not sure I would go for that one because if the if AMD is at 116, uh, that likely means that the ES is under 4200, which I just not interested in longs at that point. Uh, but 116, you could play that demand bounce. I'm more interested in this if the ES is under 42, or I'm interested in that. Uh, so we'll see. But watch your levels, 120, 116. All right, Meta. So Meta is still in the gap, right? We got to remember that. Meta is still in, you know, la-la land over here. It's really just in the middle of nowhere. Uh, if we go to the, we zoom out on the daily chart, right? Meta is still in this major daily chart gap. So am I more interested in upside on Meta? Yes. I'm not that interested in shorting Meta in this gap because I really don't know where it can reject. And I think when you're trading in a gap, uh, you're more than likely going to find, you know, sort of a fade to the upside. You're just going to sort of grind to the upside. And that's sort of what Meta has been doing. So I'm not really interested in shorting Meta while it's in this gap. Um, but you do still have to watch your rejection points. So as of today, 269, 269, right? Watch out for that 269. I know I know the Fib boys like me saying 269. Uh, so 269, 269, watch that level, right? If we break that 269, that could be your demand hold. For more upside right in this gap that could be a very nice trade on meta today if you get upside anytime this week anytime next week if meta breaks and holds above 269 that could be a nice little break and retest for upside that's definitely a watch as of right now we are still rejecting this uh so be careful playing upside into this rejection point right there's no reason to trade upside into a rejection point uh you want to wait for it to break and hold and confirm that it's going to turn to the upside uh for now you can see this 262 demand is what's holding on to Meta. That's really nice. Uh, so I would today I'd watch 269, 262, right? Very clear levels. Look for potential longs at 262. Watch for the shorts at 269, right? Those are your two major levels to watch today. Break and retest at 269 could be really nice. All right, Microsoft. This one's uh, this one looked better before the data was released. Uh, I'm interested to see if Microsoft does a little break and retest of this previous high right here, this three, 327 level, and sort of breaks this little short-term downtrend, this little flag right here. Sort of interested in this. Um, if Microsoft can find a really strong demand off 327, right, and if we can see a really strong bounce off that 327, I'm potentially interested in this, right? If the NASDAQ can get over this 336 if the es can get over this 4200 right which is doesn't look very promising right now actually it's actually looking worse 
Yeah, ES is looking worse now. If we get some kind of upside today, let's say we do break 4,200, this is going to be my long side watch uh, on, on Microsoft. That'll be, that's basically how I like to set up the day, right? What, where are my short plays? What are my long plays? Make sure I'm ready to adjust, right? Make sure I know if 4,200 breaks on the ES, what stocks am I targeting, right? So I want to make sure I know in my mind where are those stocks that I think longs are good if the futures line up. So if the futures do line up today, then I like, um, I like this Microsoft little downtrend, little flag, and then a demand hold of this 327. Uh, this is something I'll be watching today, maybe for something to set up like this, right? And then if Microsoft breaks this 331 level, I think that squeezes, right? If it breaks this previous low, then I think that really squeezes because it would trap all these shorts, right? All the shorts that piled in here, it would trap those shorts over 331. Uh, so that's something I'm going to watch for longs, uh, 327 on Microsoft. Um, yeah. If we break 327, then that thing's going down to 323. So not interested in that, right? But that's an interesting setup there, something I'm watching. Costco Wedge, still alive, my friends. It's still alive. Uh, this, is, this is really interesting, man. This is going to be a fun one to see how it plays out. That's for sure, right? This is going to be fun to see how it plays out. It's actually above the wedge right now. So that wedge has broken on Netflix or on, on uh, Costco. You need, uh, you need three, uh, 513 uh, to break out on cost, right? You need this 513 break. 513, 513 has been a really tough level. It's rejecting, uh, rejected on Tuesday, rejected yesterday, pretty much all day. But this thing is interesting, right? We have broken that wedge on Costco. You can see right here. And we actually held above it as a support. So I'm interested, right? I'm definitely going to be monitoring this thing. I don't want to lose sight of Costco here. I don't want to like lose interest and then stop looking at Costco. And then the day I don't look at it, it rallies. So Costco today, another watch, 513. Definitely watching this one. If we break over 513, I think you got some, I think you got some room here, right? Up to like 530. Uh, so big time watch, you know, don't want to get in it too early. Want to be careful of this 513 rejection that's showing up. You guys can see right here. You can see it's showing up very well there. If you can get that little hold above, right, that could set up your upside. So big time watch there on Costco. Let's see what happens. The only thing that I don't like about Costco is the weakness in the retailers. Retailers have sort of sucked. Um, so I don't love the weakness in retailers. That's my only concern there. Netflix. Netflix hourly chart. This looks interesting, guys. Netflix still looks to be on a rally. Netflix still looks to be on a rally. Netflix still looks strong as hell. Uh, if Netflix can get above 400, this thing can really move. Uh, so if I go to the daily chart and I zoom out, 400, right, is this little shelf right here. We break that 400. Uh, there's not much. There's really not much um, in the short term here. 400, 460 is this high, and then there's a gap into 508. Uh, so Netflix still looks pretty strong to me, right? This daily chart still looking pretty bullish. Volume's increasing on the upside as well. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be watching this 400 level on Netflix today. If we can get some kind of a legit hold above, uh, that could be something I really look for uh, for upside. Of course, NASDAQ needs to align. ES needs to align. We need to get a strong market for this to work. Um, but something I'll absolutely be watching. Of course, right? Both sides apply. You could also look for that 400 push and some nasty rejections at 400, right? Doesn't mean we're going to break out just because we're pushing higher. Uh, it, could still, it could still provide some pretty nice 400 level rejections back into this 388, all right? So either way, 400. I would have this on your charts today. I will say one disclaimer. Netflix is a nasty, nasty stock to trade. If you are a newer trader, if you're just getting into options trading, if you don't feel like you have that much experience, do not trade Netflix. It is probably the nastiest tra stock to trade on the market. The candles are gigantic. The option premiums move like wildfire. If you get stuck in one candle in your in the opposite direction, 
on Netflix. You will lose a lot of money very quickly. So please, just a disclaimer, Netflix is not for the faint of heart in trading. All right? Um, uh, let's go Apple. This was a sexy trade yesterday. If you guys uh, saw this one yesterday, we talked about this in the live stream yesterday. Uh, look at how this looked before the fact. Let's go to Desi TA. Actually, you know what? I'll go to the chart discord, right? This is the chart discord. Just technicals. No conversations, no, no communication, just strictly technicals. If you guys are interested in just joining strictly technicals, all right, this is the, des this is the chart, chart discord, play on words, chart, C-H, art. Uh, if we go to Apple, dun, 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 where's Apple? Did I not post it here? I could have swore I did. There it is. Apple, all right? Look at this chart from yesterday. Hold on. This is yesterday's chart, uh, and this was just a sick, sick bull flag. Look at this flag. Break, retest, previous highs, right? You break it, you break the retest, you, you break, I'm sorry, you break the high right here, break the high, you come back down, you retest that high, you turn it into demand, you create a bull flag, right? And then look at that squeeze yesterday. Awesome, awesome trade, right? Bam. So didn't hold up because at the end of the day, there was some data, but that was a sick, sick flag yesterday. Congrats if you guys took that one. Really nice, really nice upside off that flag. Break and retest, love it. Today, right? You're still above regardless of that. Uh, I think this was like a rebalancing move. I'm not sure what happened here. Yesterday, if you guys know, let me know. Uh, I think this was a rebalancing. You had a Tesla and Apple inverse reaction, right? Tesla went straight up. Apple went straight down. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, but um, regardless of this breakdown, right, you are still above that retest level, that 176.50. So don't lose sight of that, right? You are still, regardless of that Apple downside, you are still above that retest level. So Apple's still in a bullish scenario here. So watch that Apple above 176.50. All right? All right, guys. That's all I got. I'm going to head over to the chat. If you guys enjoyed today's live stream, we got 1,800 people in here. We've had trouble getting to 1,000 likes. We're getting, uh, we're not getting those 1,000 likes anymore. If you guys could help me out, if you come here on a daily basis, uh, which I know a lot of you probably do because we have the pretty much the same amount of people in here every day, if you guys are here every day, I would appreciate if you could take the time and press the like button. That's really all I ask in return is a simple like on the video. It helps a lot, more than you probably know. Um, you know, it helps YouTube push out the videos to more people, helps the channel get to more people, which is greatly appreciated. So if you guys could press that like button, that would be awesome. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these live streams. Um, if you want to trade live with me every day, the link is down below. It says trade live. If you want just charts and you don't want to deal with, you know, people talking, you don't want to deal with the extra uh, things that go on in a Discord community, and you just want charts, you just want to wake up, get some charts, trade by yourself, then you can check that out down below that says get charts, right? All right, check that out. Cyberstar, I already told you, you're, I emailed you back. I'll look at it again if you email me back. You signed up for the chart Discord. The chart Discord does not have live trading but I can look at it for you again. I'll check my email. ADR, what's up? Check out ADR's YouTube channel. Shout out ADR. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Tonight, video with Carmine. Tonight. Tonight, video with Carmine. I'm going to post it, so watch it. If you guys want to get some, some Carmine and Options Insider, a uh, little Invest to Trade Options Insider collab, <laughs> tonight uh, on my channel and then a few videos following on his channel so make sure to check those out thank you guys for being here and i will see you guys tomorrow yeah 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 adios